All right, week, week 10, week 10. We've talked about nine disciplines so far. Pray, well, I guess 10, really. Uh, prayer, fasting, study, meditation. Those were the inward uh, disciplines. Is there anything now that all these weeks later that you can look back and that has stuck out to you that uh, was maybe helpful or encouraging or reaffirming or anything that... Um, Hopefully you haven't just moved on. It's been a busy summer and everything, but uh, anything that stuck out or sticks out now, I should say, not maybe sticks out, stuck out then. What are your expanded oh. definitions? Expanded definitions, yeah, yeah. Um, it's been kind of fun looking at uh, like what Foster says, and I've kind of looked at other stuff too, kind of combined stuff to come up with some some of the definitions. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say week three, the study of meditation. Meditation, yeah, yeah, that helps, study, yeah. That has stuck out for me a lot more. Mm -hmm. Than normal. Diving, diving in, and, even and deeper than what I'm used to. Yeah, some of that will kind of come out uh, today uh, a little bit too uh, of the the study thing and, and the knowing God's word. Uh, anything else? Anything? I mean, there's not a right or wrong. It's not. I'm controversial. A controversial to the world prayer. <laughs> I pray consistently that God will shield and shelter Brody. Like oh. He just doesn't need to see. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And has a girlfriend, I guess. Uh, but he left his room and moved up to the next room, and then she went to a teacher to that room. So, like, completely missed each other. And I'm just really thankful. Little things where, where God protects. I, I, I think I think we're not even aware of the times our children are protected from our prayers that, uh, that you know, that we, we just don't know. We won't know. Or even yourselves. <laughs> and ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. That's been a prayer, a consistent prayer, of my three years of, of the innocence of the young ones, you, you know, is to, to protect that innocence. Because everything's, everything is trying to take it away. Um, so, how about the outward disciplines? The simplicity, solitude, submission, service, anything stick out there that you're like, yeah. Uh, um, maybe. Not good at <laughs> you're not good at them? <laughs> Just made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say probably all of us have room for growth in all of them, so <laughs> I wouldn't feel too bad. Um, uh, it, it's been kind of fun for me because I'm, I'm, I'm going through this, right? So I'm studying, I'm teaching it for this, and then I do a radio thing, and uh, now we're a few weeks back, like a couple hours ago, we talked about submission. So uh, that's how far we are behind on, on that, and, and kind of doing the cliff notes of... Uh, in a conversational form on the radio with, with, with about that. Uh, so it's kind of fun to revisit these and, and look at them again and, and hope maybe I'll have some of this stuff now <laughs> if I keep, keep looking at it. Well, then we went to the corporate disciplines, confession and worship. That was just most recent. Anything jump out there? Because uh, yeah. we're jumping into guidance. Guidance. Let's do it. Guidance. This is hearing God's voice and obeying His word. So, all right, so you're hearing from Him and then o obeying. Because if it's from God, if God's communicating to you, then, then well, you, you should, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I better do that because it's, it's from God. This is um, maybe part of, but even more significant than like just being on, on the lookout uh, for the next assignment from God. We, all, we like to be like, okay, God's got something for me today. And that's, I think that's a healthy attitude to have. Uh, but it's almost, um, we, we're, we're, um, have you ever noticed we're always the star of the story? You know, we're, we're the, we're the uh, whatever the character is on Mission Impossible. We're like that guy. We're just waiting for God to say, all right, I want you to go to wherever and do whatever. Like, yeah, you know, I'm ready. Um, and I, I, I'd say it's deeper than that. I mean, he might, he might do that. But um, in the history of the world of every person that's ever been born and lived, there's only a handful that that applies to. <laughs> you know, I'm not David. Uh, you know, I'm not Saul or whatever. Um, I'm Dan, and um, not the Dan of the Bible even. So, um, or not even this Dan. 
You're not me. I'm not you either. You're not. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go down. That. <laughs> but really, we read David and Goliath, you know, and we, we identify as David. We don't identify as the, the thousands of soldiers that are there on, on the field that day. You, you know, none of us are thinking, well, I'm in the third row. I'm the guy with the spear. You know, like, <laughs> he's, we don't even know his name. Like, none of them, none of them name. You got, you got armies of the Philistines, armies of, of, of the, the, the Hebrews, the Jewish people, Israelite army, um, representing all these towns and villages and cities throughout both nations. They're all part of the story. But we, all we know is we know David. We know Saul. <laughs> we know Goliath. Uh, it does say that three of David's brothers are there, and it doesn't name them. I won't even try to, I'll, I'll, I'll mispronounce them, so I, I won't. If it was in 1 Samuel 17, we, we hear that, see the names. Other than that, everybody else is nameless. If we were honest, honest with ourselves, we're, we're the nameless people in the story, generally. I, I, mean, I mean, even in our story here, we've got hundreds of thousands of people all around us. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows, I, mean, you know, I mean, you know, nobody cares. They're, they're, not, they're not on the South Des Moines Mount right now thinking, hey, what's going on at Pathway? <laughs> you know, nobody cares. You know? So God has something for us, yes. Um, but, but we're not necessarily as big as we like to think we are, um, if we're really honest uh, with, 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 our, with ourselves. Um, but God does have to speak to us. He does say things uh, to us. Um, that, that's not to depress you. That's just to be honest. You know, it's just like, yeah, we're just, let's just be obedient. Let's listen. Let's hear. Let's, let's soak in what God has for us and then, and then o- obey. Um, and that's all to say, uh, be careful as we look at this discipline today, uh, that you aren't sitting around waiting for God to call you to be the next David or the next whoever, or, you know, Apostle Paul. Uh, I've, I, I've always liked to model my life after the Apostle Paul, but I'm not the Apostle Paul. You know, he didn't call me to be the guy who started the church in the Gentile world. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not Peter. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little, a little me. Um, that God's using, I mean, he is. He uses all of us in our, in our place, in our, in our way, but it's his story, and we're just uh, kind of along for the ride. So God may call you to do something big. Be ready. None of these people who were called to something big were like, I mean, Moses was just like tending sheep thinking he's on the end of his career. Like, oh, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I'm at 80, you know, let's kind of go out to pasture, do the sheep thing. And then he gets, then he gets called. <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, God, I don't want to do this. So, you know, he had to struggle through that to, to, to engage. So don't, don't be the Moses that argues with God. Just be the, be the or the Jonah who argues with God. Uh, be, be the all the other guys that, that jumped in and did it. Uh, the, the discipline of guidance is all about hearing God's voice and conforming ourselves to his will, to his image. Uh, this is a discipline. Um, it's not just an action of, okay, heard, obey. It's, it's a discipline to, to learn to do this. And it may be uh, maybe the most frustrating discipline because everybody wants to hear God's voice. I mean, how many times have you thought, okay, God, what's your will in whatever? Uh, have a job, um, home, relationship, anything you can think of, all the things you can think of uh, that you would seek God's will in. We all want to hear God's voice, but so few people take the time to learn God's language so they hear him. As I, think, I say he's speaking to us all the time, all the time. Uh, we just don't hear. Um, sometimes it's like the uh, <coughs> distant husband, like myself, who sometimes is sitting in a chair and I hear a voice, and, and then that voice asks a question of understanding. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was paying attention. No, I wasn't. <laughs> sometimes it's that. <laughs> And sometimes I, we just don't speak the language. I, I go to Zimbabwe every year, with, you know, and every year I think to myself, man, I would love more than anything to be able to stand up in front of this, this church, this gathered crowd and speak Shona. You know, I have a translator just to be able to speak and they would understand. And I think that's not true because all I have to do is learn it. <laughs> so I wouldn't do anything. I just want it to magically happen. Come on, God, gift of tongues. This is the time. You know, this is the time. Let me speak. Let me speak, Shona, for the gospel. It's for you, God. I'm just too lazy. I do have, like, I've, I've, I have videos I've watched on learning the language. I bought two or three books. I've, I've made uh, little um, flashcards with keywords on it that uh, are on my hard drive. <laughs> Every once in a while, I print them off and I'll look at them and I'll lose them and. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I, I quiz guys when I'm there and I, I get like, uh, you know, different 
uh, twists on some of the language, but I, I can't. I can't say a sentence. I, you know, um, I'm trying to even think of a word right now. I mean, I mean, I can <laughs> picture some in my cards, but then I don't pronounce them correctly. You know. So that point being, it's, it's on me. You know, the, the reason I'm going to go here in a few weeks and I won't be able to speak the language because I haven't learned it. Sometimes that's our issue and that's our frustration because we'll be living our life doing our thing and then all of a sudden emergency happens. Uh, like, okay, God, I need to know. I had this offer. I, have, I can do this or this. I got to know tomorrow. Okay, God. And I'm like, well, I haven't been listening. I haven't been speaking the language. You know, I haven't, I haven't trained myself to hear. Uh, I'm wanting guidance. Uh, would you just put a big Bethlehem star up there? He's like, I already did that. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Uh, and that was hundreds of years in the making, you know, uh, the prophecies of Omega 600 years at the time of Daniel, and, and that's how they knew. And, and you know, so, so it's my fault, it's our fault usually that we don't know God's will because the more in tune we are, the more disciplined we are of learning His language, so to speak, the more we're in tune and we don't have to have these emergencies where we try to figure out all of a sudden, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So that, that's, that's the, the, the frustration uh, on this one, I think, because it truly is a discipline. I mean, it, it, it's not just a, come on, do better. It's like you really got to discipline yourself on, on, on this. So, all right. I genuinely believe that the, the uh, disciplines we just, we've already talked about for these first last nine, ten One's hyphenated, so there's 10, so it's number 11, right? <laughs> um, the, these we've looked at, the prayer, the fasting, the solitude, simplicity, all, all the stuff, all of this, right? That if we get those down, if we practice, like we were saying earlier, study, if we really are studying, if we really are praying, if we really are seeking, if we are listening, if we're really in solitude, we're genuinely doing all the things we've been talking about all this summer, that guidance does happen naturally because you've been learning the language. And it's and, and like you know it's it's just you just you just know if you notice some people just kind of know what God wants for them to do like there's no big struggle and they just kind of know and then they could be wrong sometimes because we're we're human we err but but they just seem to know I th I think that it's because of these disciplines uh, because this comes naturally when we've done all the stuff mentioned um, a spiritually mature person walks in line in tune walks in. Uh, line with, with Jesus. All right, so five common ways that God communicates with us. All that being said, well, how does he speak to us? Uh, the Sheepskin. Sheepskin. <laughs> what did you say? Sheepskin. Well, Gideon with the, um, the testing of the... Oh, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll, we'll, yeah. I just didn't hear your word because I'm going deaf. Uh, <laughs> so number one is scripture. Scripture, all right? And, and I'm not necessarily saying, hey, I read this verse and God told me I need to go to the Bahamas, you know, or something like that. I mean, it, it, it's, it's more of a, a, a bigger picture of, of Scripture. What's that? <laughs> oh, you're planning right now. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> That's a confirmation right there. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we like to have different verses put on the wall. Those are usually taken out of context, and they, we, 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 we take them totally different than how they were intended uh, in the first place. Um, so I'm talking about more like you read the Gospel of John, and, and you soak it in, and you say, hey, man, God loves me. I mean, he has gone to great lengths to die for me. I mean, whoa. So that becomes part of your knowledge, the, the background knowledge of who God is. Uh, I read about God's intention for sexual expression. Uh, so it's not a shock, like when I, if I start dating someone and I'm thinking, I wonder if, if, it's, you know, if it's okay. You know, I mean, we're going to get married. And, we're, can we, and you already know the answer. God's already spoken to you. It's not like, well, come on, God, do I get an exception? He's like, no, 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 you don't. <laughs> you know, so he's already spoken. It's very clear, very clear on instructions there. Uh, s someone wrongs me in some way, some way, I'm trying to decide. I don't have to forgive that, do I? I mean, I don't have to forgive them for that. That was awful. That was a terrible thing that happened to me. Do I need to forgive them? Well, you don't even have to ask that out loud. Of course you do. You, God's, I mean, it's over and over. Scripture, the Bible says, well, you, you forgive, you forgive. <coughs> even, yeah, even even that. You know, so so God has spoken to you already through, through Scripture. Um, Somebody asked me the other day, well, do you have to get baptized? And I'm like, well, you do what you want. You can do what you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do. Uh, but do you need to ask something that God, does God want you to do something that he says over and over and over to do it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like, that's the wrong question. Uh, do I have to? It's like, why wouldn't I? God's just, I mean, over and over he says do it. So why would we, why would we fight that? Or, or any scripture. That was just the one that was asked of me. Uh, um, anyway, scripture, scripture. 
Uh, number two, uh, direct <coughs> revelation. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. This can be, uh, sometimes the Spirit talks to a group, like a church. Sometimes God speaks to us in individually. Uh, I love Acts 8, because there's a picture of a couple things going on. In 20, verse 26, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, so, so God like spoke to Philip, this guy, um, through an angel. An angel appears. Get up and go south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. It's the desert road. <coughs> So he got up and went. So okay, he listened and then he obeyed. Like, oh, okay, I don't know why I'm going there. Why you, you don't ask questions, you just do it. <laughs> they told you where to go. All right, so he went. Um, there was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, high official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem. So God didn't know why this angel appeared. Why? I mean, that's a pretty big time for an angel to show up and give you specific directions like that. He didn't know what was going on, but he went. When he got there, he noticed there's an Ethiopian. He's like, oh, okay, maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know. Um, could be. Not really sure. He, and then he heard the man reading from Isaiah about a sheep going to the slaughter. And um, in verse 29, it says, the Spirit told Philip, well, go and join that chariot. <laughs> There's something going on there. I want you to talk to this guy, right? So he awkwardly goes, I don't know why I'm here. I see you're reading about this guy and the sheep and the slaughter. Do you know what you're talking about? It's from Isaiah. I have no I clue. Well, let me tell you. So then he explains the gospel. And uh, that's in uh, verse 35. Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. So, ah, there was something. God led him specifically to a place, and then the Spirit somehow spoke to him to a specific person. Uh, he begins with that scripture that the guy happened to have been reading at the time, almost like God knew he'd be reading it at that time at that place, right? They're traveling down the road, verse 36, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? So we don't know what they were talking about, but they were talking about the gospel and the guy wants to get baptized. So somewhere in their baptism had to have gotten up or he didn't just randomly, you know, come up with that on, on his own as part of the conversation. He ordered the chariot to stop. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. He baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. We don't know what, the, what does that look like? I mean, was that a poof or was it like he walked <laughs> off? I, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know. You can assume anything. The eunuch did not see him any longer, went on his way rejoicing. So the Philip tells the Ethiopian the gospel. Uh, the guy gets baptized, Philip goes away. Um, now, we have to be careful with this, with the whole spirit moving thing. Because um, uh, we probably all struggled before about, was this me or God? You know, because impulse can be a strong thing. Um, and that's, that's what I struggle with generally. Like, is this a God thing or is this an impulse thing? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then we have that. That's part of the discipline of learning his voice, right? Uh, we're having the men's. Uh, breakfast and, and, and Richard's talking about the homeless ministry that you were part of and that you'd be gone every week and all this stuff and you'd every week come back and tell a little bit more and the whole time I'm thinking well man why don't we do that you know we can do that but I'm thinking is that an impulse I mean it hits all the right things right it's like well we can do that and why not and it's a need you know I mean it's like right I mean it's not wrong with the impulse I'm not saying the impulse is wrong but it is a, a, a thing from God um, and and so uh, I, you know you're talking with Dan like well what 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 do you think? I mean, that church was, you know, winding down for the summer. And well, how about if we take take the baton? You know, um, uh, if it's from God, it's just going to happen. That that's I think that's the difference. That's why I'm always afraid to say, well, God's leading me to say whatever, because maybe it's me leading me. It's my impulse. I have I haven't distinct. I haven't learned that yet. And sometimes, um, so I will throw out things generically. Sometimes, even if I think it's the Spirit. Because if it is God, he's just going to make it happen. And look what's happened. Teams are there every time. It just keeps happening. It's a, we've built legitimate relationships. We've prayed with people. We've talked about Jesus. We're feeding. You know, all these things are happening that you can check, 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 check. So I go back and say, I think that was a God. That was a Holy Spirit moment. Because you know? we could have easily said, oh, that's really neat for you. you know, and, and, and kept doing our Saturday morning thing and not getting involved. Um, but I just felt this impulse or spirit-led thing to say, let's do it. Um, and, and the way we all jump away, yeah, why not? You know, it wasn't like any, you know, it wasn't your idea, it wasn't my idea. When Dwayne, you know, with Chris, I mean, we, we just like we did it. And, and that we've all been involved in this one. So, so I think that's been a God moment. That's been a God moment. That's, it's really cool to see the, see that happening. And then to see pictures of like dudes getting their hair cut. You, 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 you know, it's just like, okay. 
That was an impulse I had a few years ago, and it never happened. So I thought, okay, that was just an impulse. I get wild ideas all the time. Uh, Cheryl smiles and nods and, 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 and knows most won't happen, and I do too, and I think I'm okay with that. I just throw stuff out and see what happens. And see what, you know, you throw spaghetti at the wall, see which noodles stick. Ah, those are from God, you know, those were from me, you know. Um, and that's kind of what happens with that. I see all this stuff happening. It's, it's just kind of cool. Um, so, so. I, I, here, I, here's my, my thought on this. If you feel you're being led by the Spirit to do something, um, I mean, especially if it's not bad, do it, go, go for it. Go, maybe it is an impulse. Like I said, it's not bad if it was an impulse. It's still a good impulse, but go for it. If it is from God, you don't need to tell anybody. You know, I mean, I am now because we're talking about this in a class, but you don't need to go around with a shirt, this is from God, God told me to do this. You know, just, just, just let it happen. You don't need to say, I feel God leading us to do this. Um, if God is behind it, He's ordaining it, He's inspiring it, he, he, he's, he's, it's His idea, He will, uh, in His divine authority, make sure it, it happens. So, so that's why I'm pretty careful to not... If you ever hear me say, I really feel God say something, like, I really feel God saying something, because I just don't... But you guys tell me, have you ever heard, have you heard me say that much? Yeah, no. go ahead. No. No. Dwayne's heard me say it all the time. He's like, that's all he ever say. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're I'm in. What, what were you gonna say? <laughs> did, no, really, did you have an actual input? I, I, I know no, you're good. I don't, no, I was. I, yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, it's not bad. I mean, it's just I don't want to misrepresent God. I don't want to. I don't want to force God into a corner. Like I've always the story of the the prophets of Baal, you know, and and, and it's like, ha, ha, dig a trench, and he's ha, 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 laughing. They're cutting themselves. Oh, but your is your God going to the bathroom? You know, the whole thing with the when he calls down fire. I'm thinking those are bold statements. When when he does that, he had to really know it was a God. There was something that told him no God was directing that moment, because you don't just force God's hand to do something ridiculous, you know. But but God will say, I'll do, I'm going to do something ridiculous. It's going to be fun. Watch, you know, and, and you can be involved. But but that's sometimes really careful about claiming um, the Holy Spirit uh, do, doing doing something. Uh, but I love to look back and confirm and say, ah, that was a Holy Holy Spirit moment. Um, okay, that's it. Number three, uh, divine providence or circumstances. Uh, this is when a number of circumstances, just general things, right, come together and you realize this, this had to be God. Divine providence. And then there's like no logical explanation, like why, why did all these things happen? Um, it, I, I've seen that happen a few times in, in my life. Uh, back in the, had to be late, when did we go see acapella? The Stocks, give me Jim Stocks and Cheryl and I went to see acapella. Yeah, had to be late 80s or some mid, mid to late 80s. Anyway, we go see this concert in Atlantic, Iowa. All right, and I'm like, you guys must have told us it was there because I'm like, I don't, what's Atlantic, Iowa? Never heard of Atlantic, Iowa. I don't know, maybe you guys had heard of it. We, we had never been there, right? I mean, we never heard of it. We we're like, okay, we had to look it up on a map, you know, <laughs> and an uh, hour and a half west of here. And uh, okay, we loved a cappella, the cool, cool band. And uh, well, is it a band? They're all vocals, whatever. Um, and, and enjoyed the concert, but, but we get in the town, we're driving around we're kind of making fun of it because it's a small town and, and um, you know we're Des Moines people right and 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 not that we make fun of small towns but it was like we were drove down what we thought was the downtown we thought who would live here <laughs> it wasn't the downtown for their under defense uh, we found out later <laughs> it was just like the old old just old stuff and uh, drove around thought, oh man we who said out loud we would never live here was that I mean we'll was it Jim <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we had said it. Like we were all like, "Yeah, who would live here? I mean, who would on purpose live here?" You know. I mean, <laughs> anyway, that happened. Enjoyed the concert. Went home. Story over. No big deal. Right, right, right. Uh, a few years go by, um, and, and uh, I was preaching at a church called East Side Church of Christ over by the fairgrounds. It's not there anymore. I did such a good job. Um, and <laughs> there were like 16 people there when I first started. I was 20 years old, a sophomore in college. Started preaching there. There were 16 people. We got up to 100, uh, 100 and something, 20 or something. I mean, the building like fit 90, you know, so it was one of those. It was like, it was, it was, it'd be a tight fit. Um, and we had a good time. Loved, loved our time there. There were six years and everything. Planned to stay there forever. I never go to a church uh, thinking it's, um, 
a career, like a stepping, stepping stone. stone, yeah, or like I never look for the next big church. I've never, I, I say I never, never have. It's been 40 years now. Um, I've just thought it's a, a calling. There's plenty of work to do, whether you're a church of 16 or 16,000. It doesn't matter. Do what God calls you to do and, and what doors he opens. So, like, I've just not been that guy chasing down uh, more opportunities. So I'm at this church. I'm assuming we're going to live there forever. I uh, assume at some point we'll probably buy the fairgrounds because that's going to be that big. You know, that's how my mind thinks. <laughs> Uh, and um, and it's going to be really great, and it's going to be really wonderful. Somewhere down the line, Cheryl gets pregnant. Um, we have our, our first babies on the way. She's over there eating a sucker right this moment. It's so special. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, your mind starts to think a little bit differently, and, 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 and the church is looking at us, and we have a great relationship with the church. And one of the day, one, one, day, one of the elders came up and said, hey, we were talking about you guys. And I thought, oh, what does that mean? You know, and they said, we, we, um, we feel like you have more potential for what you're doing here. Uh, so you don't have to go. No one's firing you. Nobody's upset with you. And you think of that, but we think you should consider moving to a bigger church. And I'm like, oh. all that did was motivate me to say, well, if I want a bigger church, all I got to do is here. I mean, you know, I already got one. So, uh, you know, so, yeah. And, but they're older and wiser, and they kind of knew. They're also kind of set in their ways. And they probably wouldn't say it this way, but, but we'd get to 100, and they would self-sabotage so it'd get make sure it got back to 75. And no, no, nobody does that on purpose, but churches do that all over the place. Um, you know, I mean, like, there was, a, there was quite a battle over getting air conditioning. There was never air conditioned, you know. And, and, and like, eh, we're like, we don't live in 1930 anymore. But they're like, well, we used to stick to the benches. Well, we don't like to stick to the benches. You know what I mean? So things like that. It's self-sabotage. Um, and anyway, I <laughs> think... Things are going well. Still, I decide, you know, nope, nope, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna make this thing happen. And, and somewhere, again, it was a positive conversation. It was good. Uh, somewhere, as we prayed several months later, uh, we're pondering it, and, 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 and we decide, you know what, maybe they're right. Maybe, 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 maybe we should. Some, some, something clicked in our minds that, you know what, let's, uh, let's, let's do this. So we brainstormed, where, where would we go if we're not here? Um, well, nowhere smaller than Des Moines was our only criteria. So we're thinking, you know, Dallas, Chicago. I, I can't remember where we all, we had all the big cities, you know, kind of circled and just, just dreaming, you know, just talking. Where are we going to go? Because everybody's going to want to hear me preach. I'm great, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not. But um, the next day, I get a phone call from this guy. We didn't tell a soul, right? It was just a personal conversation. We didn't tell our church, our elders, we didn't tell anybody. And the next day, a guy from Atlantic calls. My name's Dick Meyer from Atlantic, Iowa, and we're looking for, I'm in the head of a group uh, hiring and hiring a preacher. We'd like to talk to you. And, you know, have a kind of, I hang up. I said, where'd we go see acapella? Uh, what was the name of that town? Atlantic. Like, yeah. <laughs> where? <laughs> Isn't that where we said we'd never live? <laughs> well, I always said that was God's humor. Yeah. Who would ever live in a town like this? Maybe it was probably more of a com yeah, comment like that. And I thought God has a good sense of humor. <laughs> well, you will. <laughs> that very town. So then, then the joke was, you know, when we go to other towns, it was... Oh, we, I uh, love this town. <laughs> I hope God sends us to Hawaii. We said that multiple times. <laughs> they need churches. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a pain. God was prepping Yeah, yeah, it was the circumstances that all came together. The leader came to you and spoke to you about it for a reason. Yeah. Because it wasn't on your radar. Not at all on the radar. It could have been a circumstance that when they called, you could have said, eh, and, and moved on. Yeah. And yet. Because it was Atlantic, it pe like, huh, like what, you know? And so we had conversations with them, went to met with the leadership there, talked to people there. We drove like the next day. Thought, okay, now we got to drive there again because all I remember was little, you know, thing. And we're like, this is kind of a cute town. You know, it's like a whole completely different angle. Uh, I remember uh, driving through the parking lot a couple, two or three times, and then we thought, okay, they're going to call the police. And uh, <laughs> like we went across the street somewhere and just parked the car and prayed and, and said, God, whatever you want. Man, we are, well, you are God, we're not, and blah, blah, blah. And all the little hoops we jumped through, all, obviously we ended, we ended up going there. And, I wanted, and when I went there, the goal was to stay there forever. Like I was never going to leave, um, never had any intention of leaving. And then it was similar circumstances that, that brought us to here, except we'd already heard of you know, Des Moines. But, um, <laughs> What's that? Next stop coming, Iowa. Next stop, Iowa. 
Cummings, Iowa. Oh, Cummings, Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they said coming to Iowa. I thought, well, we're in Iowa. No, I, okay, that's a town. That's a town. See, yes, yes, I hope. <laughs> So anyway, it's just, it's just circumstances that come together. You start connecting to the God dots going, huh, it's like God just opened this thing. We didn't pursue it. We weren't chasing it. Um, we had confirmation from like, the church there. It was like, maybe it's really a time. It was a little bigger church and more established and, and, and the whole thing. And, and we were going back and forth part-time, full-time with the little church we were at. I was working in a factory in school. And, and uh, I was there six years. I was past school but, but um, by this time. But, you, you know, it, it's circumstances, circumstances. Um, so sometimes God just does that. He just lines things up and you go, you look back and go, huh, look what God did. Uh, it just works that way. Uh, number four, Christian community. Christian community. The Holy Spirit speaks to individual lives. He also, I believe, speaks to church families in individual lives. <laughs> we just get together and we say, huh, wow, isn't that weird? We were thinking the same thing. Like, I'll bet you half, like all the men, the way we responded when we threw that out about the homeless thing, they were all like, well, yeah, like I think everybody was thinking it. You're like, well, why don't we do this? It's like almost like God was saying, like, come on, we got something to say. Somebody's going to say this eventually and we'll make this thing happen. And I think that's a community, uh, how that works. Matthew 18, again, I tell you, two of you on earth agree about any matter you pray for, be done for you, my Father in heaven. We always, we always, you know, key in on that. We're two or three are gathered together in my name. I'm there among you. He's, the, he's like, he's here. Okay, the Spirit of God is here, and he's in our midst, and there's something uh, spiritual about the people of God uh, together. Acts 4, the entire group, those who believe, were one in heart. I mean, how do you get that, right? Uh, one mind. No one claimed any of his possessions of his own. Instead, uh, they held everything in common with great power. The apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great grace was on them all. There was not a needy person among them because all those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the proceeds of what was sold, laid them at the apostles' feet. This was then distributed to each person as they had need. Uh, they're all one heart, one mind. They're together like the Spirit is just working in all of them. They're, they're randomly, I don't know, did they put an announcement video out? Everybody sell your land? I don't think so. I think it's just people, it was just happening. They're bringing it in. They're meeting needs. They're, they're providing for one another without someone having to try to derive it to make it happen. Uh, Acts 13, they're worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit has set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then after they fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So, so the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking to a group, a church, while they're practicing the other disciplines, right? They're, they're worshiping, they're praying, they're fasting, all these things we've been talking about in the midst of the whole church, engaged in the spiritual disciplines, engaged in their spiritual walk, engaged in, in seeking God's counsel. In the midst of that, God says, hey, set aside Barnabas and Saul. Generally speaking, God speaks mostly to his people as a group. You know, we've seen it throughout the Bible. Hey, Israel, follow this flame at night and cloud by day. It wasn't just a little flame in front of Moses. It was like the whole camp saw it, right? Everybody saw where God wanted them to go. Some still grumbled. Some decided to disobey. That's, you know, and, that, and they ended up getting separated throughout different little stories. Uh, in this situation, the church was fasting, they're worshiping. God says, set apart, set aside Paul and Barnabas. Have you ever noticed uh, we tend to do that opposite of that? Um, when I say we, I'm talking about there, uh, I don't look at what I do as a profession. It's a calling, I just happen to get paid. But uh, people who do what I do often do this opposite. I've always been troubled by that. Um, because everybody I know, and, I, and maybe I've done it some myself, I don't know. Uh, everybody I know, whenever they feel called by God to go to a new church, have you ever noticed it's always bigger? With more pay and more programs and more flashy and more whatever. No one ever says, you know, God's calling me out into the middle of the country to where there isn't anything to do something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, I can sell more books if I go out there. I, you know, whatever it is, all the stuff. I get more more people, and 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 it, you know, part, we have egos too. Everybody, you know, so I, I get it. I, I get it. But it just seems the opposite of how the New Testament Christianity was, uh, and how it worked here in in uh, the Scripture we're reading. Paul and Barnabas don't come to the church and say, "Hey, you know what? God's calling us to go somewhere else." The church went to them and said. God's calling you to go somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, what? 
what? So, so we started with a vision uh, pathway to plant 10 churches in 20 years. That was the goal. Um, and, and especially in the first five to 10 years, for 10 years, I was continually identifying people who I thought would be great preachers of the next new church. Right? And I'd pull them in, I'd do some training, uh, we'd go to church planting seminar conferences, uh, weekly meetings, I mean, all, all, this, all the conversation was about when we start our next, we, it was either, I was gonna give them the option, do we do a campus, so we have multiple campuses, this is before campuses were cool, and <laughs> now everybody does it, and anyway, um, or you can be your own church, I don't care, but ever God, you know, we'll let God worry about that when the time comes. So it's so a lot of training, a lot of training. Uh, every, every single time uh, I was working with people, they would get to a certain point where they thought I'm ready, right? And they get all excited, work this time, we're gonna go start a church, right? And, and I, like every single time I'm like, you're not really ready. Um, We've talked to Charlie, I've talked about this before, or maybe, I don't know, the kids. Uh, I have a tendency to make it look really easy, not because I'm that good, but because I just don't tell you what goes on behind the scenes. Usually, I, you know. So they all thought, like, man, if this oaf can do it, like, we can do it. I, I mean, everyone th th thinks that. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's like, it can't be that hard, right, to plant a church, except the four out of five fail. <laughs> every, you know. um, and, and so every time I'd have the conversation, you're not, let, let's not do it yet. Like, but I'm hearing from God as well. I'm not, you know, maybe you are. I mean, I'm not gonna, I can't stop you, you, you know, but, but, but I, I don't, I think it made a mistake. It was never an argument. You know, it wasn't like a negative thing. It was just like, really, I encourage you to hold on. Well, no one ever did. And they would go start their church. I don't think a thing one of them worked. Except there's one, there's a house church out there that's, that they never intended to do like the, bah, you know, no stuff. So they're, they're solid. I still meet with them every week, you know, and, and they're good friends. Um, but even them, I was like, not yet, not yet. <laughs> like, but we feel like God leading us. Well, you know what? God speaks. To, God speaks to the church. Nobody else thinks that yet. <laughs> uh, uh, let's let us all come to that conclusion. You know? Uh, oh, we got to go. And at some point, it's like when they've already mentally separated. It's almost it's a more of a danger to have them here because then it becomes you know it's a, it's a negative. It's like oh we don't want to you know, we do our own thing. You know. So I was like ah go start your church. Um, God bless you. I mean it's not not a like I say it's not a bad thing. It's what I encouraged. That's what we had been training to do. Um, but I don't think it was a good time. So actually, I would say it did kind of hurt us. We had to come back from that, which that's always part of the thing. It's part of the excitement is you rebuild. You know, you you send people off and you rebuild. I, I kind of get into that. Um, but when you start off, when you go too soon, I think it's negative to both. Um, and what I say that for is, I, I, at some point, I guess after the last one, I just stopped identifying people and doing that because because I thought okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill our church by sending up all these churches, um, and then they'll all be dead. Be dead. Uh, so I just like totally stopped that, and I was like, but I also someday that might happen, and I'm totally open to that. And like, if the whole church says, man, look at this, we got 500 people, we can't, can't contain them all, we're gonna send a couple hundred people up, well, they're like, yeah, let's do it. But I'm not pushing it. Um, I think, I, think I, I, I got ahead of the Holy Spirit there, which then got them excited, and got them ahead of the Holy Spirit. Um, anyway, that's just my theory on, on the thing. And I, I had to work through that for a couple, three years personally, just like trying to figure out like, okay, what well, am I doing? Is it me? Am I doing something? Uh, because it wasn't what we're reading in Scripture here. Yeah, you know, it wasn't the church celebrating like, wow. I mean, that had to hurt when Paul and Barnabas left. They had to be great. Uh, part of their church ministry. But God had like, yeah, we're going to start the entire Gentile movement. So, yeah, get out there. You know, you know so, I mean, there was a win. It was a kingdom win. All of them have been kingdom wins. But, but um, uh I say that out loud just to say that, that we're the ones who should be praying and fasting and, and, and God will tell us when, when XYZ needs to go start a new church or needs to go do what, whatever. We'll let, let God worry about it. Um, uh, and that's, I don't mean that as a criticism. I hope it doesn't come across that way. I just understand, I mean, I understand the excitement of, of starting a church. I've done it, right? Um, but uh, maybe my error was targeting people, telling them too much before they were grounded in the disciplines. Um, because, anyway, yeah, anyway, I don't need to go to my therapist now. <laughs> Figure that out. Um, I, I always chuckle on the inside. I try not to outside. When, when, when someone tells me, you know, God's really leading me to a different church, you know, I think, no, he's not. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can go. I mean, I don't hate you. That's fine. You get to go. Um, 
but just be honest. Just say, you know what, I'm bored. I, I just go somewhere every couple of years, and I just gotta go. It's like, okay. God, God bless you. <laughs> you know, be a blessing where you go next. That that that's okay. Or or uh, you know, I don't I don't like your your sermons uh, make me want to throw up. Ah, okay, that 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 can. I mean, I'm not for everybody. Okay, I get that. Um, or maybe we're just not a good fit. That that that's that's true. That, that's a, that's legit. You know. Or maybe there is an issue. And, uh, something to get someone. It's like I can't see that person I, because it just brings hurt, whatever. Okay, um, at least be honest with ourselves and don't don't blame it on God, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I never argue, I, I just, okay. It's funny, nobody else has got that from the Holy Spirit yet, but uh, uh, if you're ever at that point, just be praying and let people confirm that before you just magically decide <laughs> you're out, <laughs> we're done. Because um, maybe you are, maybe God does have something for you. So, I mean, you know. Uh, who, who knows? Um, yeah, like I say, people can do what they want, just don't blame God. Um, we have taken this Christian community a guidance approach uh, very uh, seriously, um, except for the mistakes I've just told you about. And even that was intended. Uh, we, we were in school for, for 12 years before we, we moved, moved into here. And what, what a lot of people didn't know is, is that uh, even before we met the first time in a school, we were looking at permanent locations. I mean, it, it was not like we were hoping to do set up and tear down for 12 years. Nobody likes that. Uh, so we, we were going multiple times, multiple places. Uh, I'm sure people hated when they saw my name come up on their caller ID. Is it really? They're going to look at another place. Um, and the approach we took with this was like either I or, or key staff uh, would go first. And if it made sense, and we would prayed about it, uh, then we would like bring in the leadership team. But it had, it had to pass the first step, you, you know, um, because why bring everybody in if you know, it's a waste of time? Um, so sometimes we find a place like, well, this will work. Sometimes it was obvious, okay, we can't afford, so you wouldn't believe how many places it was like $10,000 a month, we just we don't have that kind of budget, you know? And that was for a lease. Um, and for a 10 year, and it was like, uh, come on, we're a new church, or like, whatever, you know, okay. Um, so there were so many times we like, we just like, nope, nope. So, and we'd pray about it, and then we'd bring leadership to him. And if it was like, I don't see any reason not to. And we'd get them all cut, and they'd go through it, and they'd pray, and we'd talk, and we'd, you know, do the whole thing, pray, pray, pray. Um, many times got cut off there, because they had, you know, uh, wisdom and things that maybe the, the, the rest of us didn't have. And, and uh, and so people would never hear about it, you know. It just, I have pictures on my hard drive, but um, we wouldn't do it. Then there were a few times when it got past them, we thought, wow, I don't see a reason not to do this. Let's, let's get the congregation in, involved. And then so we would ask, invite, we'd set up a prayer time at the, at the location, give them some key information, just send them around praying all over the building, and and, um, uh, and we'd give them a couple of weeks to just tell us what you're hearing from, from God. What, 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 what's God leading you? Because right now we don't see a reason to not do this particular thing. And uh, we did that at Lockheed, Clive. You know, we did it a few times, a few, a few times um, here. <laughs> um, and obviously, each time it was, a, it, was a, it was a no for a different reason. It was just like it made sense. Okay, okay, we're just getting a real negative. Stop, stop, don't do it. And then we came in and this, and this was a pit. This was a horrible. I mean, it was, it was. I, I, I was scared to let people in here because if you can't see future, if you can only see what you see, like some people can't see potential, you know, all they can see is like, well, are you joking me? <laughs> um, and they, we, we got some of that. Um, but uh, I thought, well, well, that God's God's issue, not mine. He's the head. Um, and so we brought him in. We had prayer time. They were all over the, all over the place. And, and, and first we did it across the street, uh, and, and we got that, um, and then it was, it was this. Um, that wasn't for church, that was for offices and youth group and stuff. Um, and then we did this, and, and like there was never a reason not to. And I remember it was, it was a scary moment when, when it, we came back to the leaders being ultimately to make that decision. And it was just like, oh man, even the bank said yes. You know, we're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's really exciting, but it's really scary too, you know? <laughs> Um, and then we did it, and I, th I think it's been like a great blessing. Like, like I mean, it's not a perfect building and all stuff, but but it's like it, I love it. I, lo I love it. It's been, a lot of ministry has happened here, um, and we'll continue, you know, as long God willing. Um, but that that's all the it's community. It's the community. You know, it wasn't like we didn't take a vote. We've never taken a vote on anything ever. Um, it's a consensus thing, and then it's a prayer thing, and then to let let us know thing. See the. This is what scares me with votes, because uh, that's that's the traditional way that ch churches will, will, will do a congregational vote. Um, the problem is if you're not in these disciplines, if you're not listening to God, 
I don't even want to know what God's leading you to. I don't want to know what your opinion is. I don't care about my opinion. I mean, I have all kinds of opinions that are dumb, you know, so I don't trust me. Um, I want to know where, where's the heart of God. So I, do I trust everybody really fasting about this? You know, do I, do I, can I trust that everyone has prayed about it? You know, I mean, Israel had a flame at night and a cloud by day, and they're like, oh, let's go back to Egypt where it's cool, you know, like, uh, so I don't, I don't trust congregational votes because if they took a vote, in the desert, they would have been back in Egypt. Yep. Bad, bad choice. <laughs> we want to follow God's lead. Um, and so that's, that's, that's why we do the way we do it and how we do it. Just if, if you've never heard that before, that's kind of how, how that works. We just had a conversation in, in our eldership team here uh, a few weeks ago, within the last month or two. Um, I'm turning 60 in five months, right? That's like, I remember when I started preaching, that was like, oh, that was like, I didn't think I'd ever live that, you know, that's like really old. <laughs> <You know that. laughs> Now, I currently have like a 20-year retirement plan. Like, I, don't, I have no intention of retiring. Right? Um, uh, my brother had great plans five weeks ago. We're burying him on Saturday. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just how life is, right? Um, if my body and my mind stay healthy, I'll keep doing this for 20 more years or more. I don't want to, I don't want to put a limit. Um, but I figured 80, eh, we'll see what's going on. Well, um, Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl will be <laughs> feeding me rat poison. And like, Time to slow down, honey. You know? <laughs> um, I don't know, but see, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, so I was talking to the guy saying, you will recognize before I do, because I, I, I won't see it, you know, just like the pro athlete who should have retired six years earlier and like, <laughs> are you looking at the statistics? Oh no, I'm a great guy. I'm a Hall of Famer. It's like, nah. <laughs> you know. I told him, I said, I'm going to trust you guys to identify and let me know. And then we'll come with a long-term plan. And we'll be like, okay, you're out in a week. It'll be like, ah, maybe like in five years we'll evaluate and say, okay, maybe I just need to lighten my load and bring someone else, you know, I should decrease, someone else should increase. Well, we want to do it so it's healthiest for the church so I don't just disappear uh, suddenly. But I trust those guys um, with that information. You know, you know, it's not everywhere I would say that to, to, to a group of guys um, but I believe they'd be they're looking for the best interest of the church the best interest of me best interest of Cheryl the best interest uh, you mean leading from God and there'll be prayer and there'll be fasting and, and there'll be a good conversation I say like, I'm totally into that all right all right uh, in the meantime I'm planning on 20 years um, and uh, we'll see what my body does um, we I mean yeah well, yeah we'll, we'll just see <laughs> What's that? As you get older, it just laughs at you. It just laughs, yeah. <laughs> you say you want to get up? No. <laughs> You're going to sit down for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, number five is personal integrity. This is a super short one. Uh, the integrity of the upright guides them. The perversity of treacherous, uh, the treacherous destroys them. Um, I, I was walking in the class tonight, and... I saw that Dwayne dropped a hundred dollar bill uh, outside. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have to ask God if what I should do with that. <laughs> okay, that's not true. But uh, <laughs> what's that? Put it in the collection. Put, put it in the collection, but yeah. <laughs> uh, integrity says you give it back. I mean, I mean you, you know, so that that's closely related to one in Scripture. Um, it comes from God's word. So, so but but integrity. Sometimes you you just do things, even if it's like there's not a Bible verse. You just know that's how you should do that. But but that's that's from from God. Okay, those are the normal, customary ways God generally speaks to us. There's a handful of uh, was it just a couple? No, there's a few uh, extraordinary or rare ways God can speak to us. Uh, and we have to be careful with these uh, because they're even rare in the Scripture. All right. So for us to expect them to happen every day to us would be expecting more than probably God is really willing to do. I mean, He can do what He wants. He might He can do it every day, every day if He wants, and He could handpick you uh, and do it all. But I wouldn't expect it. Don't feel like you're failed in the faith if some of this does not happen to you, because most people in the history of the planet this has never happened to. Some of it has. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so we'll let Him worry about that. The first is the fleece thing with Gideon. Um, uh, you know, God calls Gideon to be this uh, warrior and, and to save the people. And, and he says, you're going to win all these countries have gathered. They're going to destroy uh, God's people. And he calls in Gideon to be a judge in, in chapter 6. Uh, he's already told Gideon he's going to win, but Gideon wants to, like, make sure. Like, really? I mean, am I, did I hear you correctly? This is how I would be. This is how I kind of tend to be, like, 
I think I heard you right, but did you say you're gonna win or am I gonna spin and fall down? I'm not sure, I wanna make sure I got that right. So uh, in verse 36, uh, Judges 6, Gideon said to God, if you will deliver Israel by me, as you said, so he said he would, I will put a wool fleece here on the threshing floor. If dew is only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, I'll know you'll deliver Israel by me, as you said. And that's what happened. When he got up early in the morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung dew out of it, filling a bowl of water. That's, a, that's more than dew. That's like a whole yeah. thing. Yeah, that, that's like, hello, I already told you. I'm telling you again. But that still wasn't enough. So Gideon tells God, don't be angry at me. Uh, let me speak one more time. Please allow me to make one more test with fleece. Let it remain dry and the dew be all around the ground. And that night God did as Gideon requested, only the fleece was dry and the dew was all over the ground. So he's just wanting to confirm. He's just like, God, do you really, do you really, I much, did I hear you that's right? It's to find clarity. Um, I, I've done this, and, and I don't, this, is, this isn't bad, this isn't bad to do this. I, I just, just, I wouldn't do it every week, you know, I mean, <laughs> be careful on, on it. For big things, I have done it. Before we moved here uh, from Atlantic, because like, it was so clear that we moved to Atlantic, and before coming here, like, like I had like three things, because like, like, we, we prayed for a year and a half every single day, and, and, and we, weren't communi we weren't getting the same answer, and, and Cheryl tends to be more sensitive. Uh, to the spirit, uh, she sees things I don't see, and sometimes I'm like, "Oh, what do you know? You're just a woman." Um, I don't say that, but <laughs> now we're talking forgiveness next week. No, <laughs> no uh, that's not truly my attitude, but but um, I sometimes ignore because I think I'm so smart, and, and she's always right. Um, and and so you know, there was like, we didn't have a clarity. Do we really really go? Um, and, and, and so I did it, and then God confirmed it. Then I think I did it like, I did it like twice. I did it again. I'm like, okay, that was, I was made it too easy. You know, Lord, may the sun come up in the east. You know, it's like, well, of course it's going to come up in the east. You know, uh, so, so I made like things that you just wouldn't expect, and it all happened. And it was like, Ugh. And even finally, Cheryl was like, obviously, we're like, okay, that's just obvious. We got to do this. So, so we came here. Um, so just be careful on it. We got, we have 4,000 years of, of Old Testament history in the Bible here. This is the one example of fleece we have. <laughs> you, you know, so like I say, it wasn't like, everybody doing it every day uh, um, but it's not bad it's not wrong to do it um, but if you are asking God something that he doesn't have any intention of answering <laughs> don't blame him you, you know you're the one forcing the hand God you have to answer and here's how he might go yeah I'm God <laughs> and you're not this happened to be a big deal, uh, you know, and the judges and the history of, of Israel and everything. And uh, so God was in, involved with that. Um, so, you know, if you're like, okay, God, if you want me to leave my spouse, may the sun come up in the morning, you, you know, uh, that's probably not, you know, he, we already know a double thing reason that's not going to happen. Or, or God, if you want me to apply for that job that I really don't want, uh, just make my dog recite the Pledge of Allegiance while standing on his feet, you know, on his toes or something. You know, I mean... <laughs> He's probably not going to do that, you know, make my donkey speak, you know, um, that did happen once in scripture. But, um, you know, so just be careful what, what you, how you approach this. Um, I mean, that was a miracle, the fleece thing, um, but it wasn't like outlandish, you, you know, I mean, it was... Uh, well, also, if you want to do something, don't tell Cheryl, she'll pray about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm in enough trouble. Um, Number two are, <laughs> oh, you didn't hear. Um, number two is angels. Uh, angels happen. I mean, uh, Hebrews says, uh, don't neglect to show hospitality. To you. You know, some have welcomed angels without guests, uh, as guests, without even knowing it. So they happen, all right? All right. But don't feel like you've failed as a Christian if you haven't ever seen an angel and or an angel's never spoken to you. I, I mean, again, it's very few times it's, it's happened. And usually it's monumental things. Hey, Mary, this 4,000-year plan is coming to a climax. You're going to have a baby. I mean, that, that, that's a big moment. It wasn't just a random girl saying, hey, you're going to have a baby. Uh, it was the Messiah that was coming. Or, or Zachariah, you know, hey, did I appear to them. Peter uh, had, had angels. I mean, there's times it happened to him. Uh, we read about Philip, and he's like, okay, we're bringing the gospel to Africa, the continent of Africa. Let's reach this Ethiopian eunuch. <laughs> Philip, go down to that road. You know, okay, it was a big deal. An angel showed up and, and said that. Um, so, uh, and that Hebrews text doesn't necessarily say that we'll see angels that have messages for us, although that's what their name means, messenger. Um, but they might. We'll let God worry about that. Um, 
You can pray for God to do it if he wants, but he doesn't have to. I mean, it's just, it's just maybe, maybe not. Don't be obsessed is my point. Number three is dreams. Um, sometimes God provides dreams. The Apostle Paul had dreams about direction. Daniel interpreted dreams. Joseph had dreams. Peter had dreams. Uh, again, those are pretty big deals. Uh, God certainly can speak to us in dreams. I don't doubt that a bit. Uh, they might have confirmation. You might have some direction. I don't know. But I wouldn't ever let that rest on its own as, well, I had a, Cheryl had a dream to move to Hawaii. You know, I mentioned that already once tonight. Um, it's like, nah, she'd be like, no, he didn't. Um, <laughs> we'll go on our vacation again. Well, we did that once. Uh, so anyway, don't, don't assume it means nothing, but don't assume it means something. Just give God space there, I guess. Uh, um, I used to have a friend who, if I made a mistake and say, man, I had a wild dream last night, he would interpret every dream I ever had. And I'm like, maybe, maybe. I mean, you know, I don't know, but I don't know how he knows any better than I do. Or, uh, I mean, and it wasn't anything bizarre. You're just like, oh, you're going to meet a friend or whatever. And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, it's just hard to jump. You know, there's, I don't know if there's an angel behind every dream, you know. There could be, but... but uh, I don't make any life decisions generally on a dream. This is confirmed by other, other things. Uh, I don't trust myself to be that in tune. Um, so always confirm any message you get you know, with Scripture. He, it, God's never going to tell you something that's anti-scriptural. Because you know? um, there's other spirits that could probably give you dreams too. I don't know. Uh, all right, number four is vision. A vision's a vivid mental picture when you're awake. I've not ever had one. It'd be kind of cool. I have a vivid imagination, but it's not. I mean, I can't say I've had a, a vision. Those are in Scripture too. Uh, God can speak to you in a vision if He wants. Don't be disappointed if He never, if you never have one. Probably 99.9999% of the people ever born will never have one. But if He might give you one, I'm not going to say I'm not going to be the guy who says He can't or won't. Um, and it'd be kind of cool. Let me know if He does. Um, but um, be careful of people who say they have visions regularly. Sometimes you, you hear, hear those. That happens in Africa a lot, too. That's how they get credibility. You know, it's like, oh, I'm a prophet. I'm, a, I'm an apostle. Here's what they'll say. It's like, ah, you know, the, the visions you're having uh, have a lot to do with you. You know, <laughs> I don't know. And me giving you money. It's like, ah. <laughs> it's really convenient. How do you fight a vision? I mean, I was, I, you know, we can't share. We can't look at it together. You know, it's like, no, this is what God said. Give me your sheep. You know, it's like, nah, I don't think he did. <laughs> but, you know. If God gives me that vision and you're that vision, I may mean, give you a sheep or two. I don't know. <laughs> we'll think about it. But, but, but that's vision. Extraordinary. Uh, and number five is signs. Um, I mean, the only thing that came to mind, like the, the Star of Bethlehem was a sign. It was a very clear sign to the people who were studying it. I don't think it's like the postcards, uh, Christmas cards, where everybody saw it. Maybe they did. But, but I think it was the astrologers back in Babylon who Daniel had written about what was going to happen. And, and they, they saw it and they said, ah the king where that Daniel was from and they started following it um, and there was, a, so there was a sign very vivid sign to them but I don't know if the shepherds saw the star they saw angels <laughs> that was better than the star I mean you know star meant not, it would mean nothing to me I'd be like oh look at that you know I'd get my little app out and go oh that's the sign that's the you know <laughs> I, that's whatever but um, so so be careful but um, a sign is usually showing you you're on the right path uh, we went to Nashville uh, recently and, and like you know you're driving along you see a sign Nashville 300 miles oh going the right direction and all of a sudden it's like Nashville 200 miles oh I guess we're still going the right direction you know things are good and, and pretty soon you see a sign that says Nashville you know and, and there you are so I think that's what God does with with, with signs um, and, and maybe you know in, in the like in book the book of Acts you see the, the apostles doing signs and miracles and things maybe that's a whole different thing too that the sign through the miracles that people are coming to Christ and and, and that um, but that's probably different than what we're talking about so uh, again you have to be careful just careful with this um, if you want something bad enough you can convince yourself anything is a sign uh, I mean uh, I have a friend who who uh, felt really strongly that God wanted them to adopt because uh, they had friends who had adopted and it's a cool story and there's all these great things and 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 they're walking by and they saw like a magazine and they said oh God wants us to go from there and then they tried and they went through all these hoops and did stuff and it's like it never happened and uh, you know, God bless their passion and their desire of their heart, but it wasn't from God or it would have happened, <laughs> you know, because God can make anything happen. Um, it, it was just a, a really willing heart, you know. Again, not wrong, but be careful to say God wants us to do something because I saw a magazine cover or a box of thumbtacks or, you know, whatever it is. Um, maybe, you know, but, but 
just be careful uh, with all that. These are all rare. Anyone by himself can be misleading of uh, these ones we just mentioned. Um, sometimes it's just us wanting it so badly. And, and we're human. I get it. I guess it's not a bad thing. Okay. If you're not hearing from God, it may not be that he isn't speaking. It's probably that we're not hearing correctly. So there's a couple ideas if you're stuck. Um, and these were just interesting, uh, just little paragraph things. Uh, one is a, uh, that the, uh, I think Foster's book talks about these, um, if you're stuck. They, had, they have meetings for clearness. You're struggling with a des- decision that you're, you have, a, like you're in a fork in the loop. I can have this, this or this. I can, you know, or I'm trying to decide what to do. You should gather in a group of trusted friends who uh, are spiritual. You trust spiritually. Um, you trust their opinion. You know they're godly people, and you just you pray, you worship, you talk, and you just see what floats to the top. Um, uh, I don't I think it's kind of a fun. Uh, I don't know if I've been a part of officially of that, but I've certainly done it with groups of people. We'll just sit there and talk. I think our men's thing every Saturday is just us talking and seeing what floats to the talk. That's, that's how that's how I view it. That's why I don't mind if we get off topic, or I don't care if we did chapter with this or that, or it's just like hey, we're talking and and things are coming up out of it, and it's cool. Um, meetings for clearness. A second one that he calls sound the call, and that's uh, one church does this, that um, anytime someone wants to start a new ministry, at the conclusion of a worship service, I'll actually, they'll stop and just share the vision for the ministry, and then they'll say, anybody come and just tell, tell me what, you're, what you think. <laughs> give, me, give me every reason not to do it, every reason to do it. Uh, uh, they call it test the call. Um, and uh, the probe, pray, question, um, some people will do that uh, before they're going to in- get engaged. When they're getting engaged or, and thinking about getting married, to say, "Hey, I'm thinking about marrying this, this person. What do you What do you all think, Church? That's risky. <laughs> That's kind of scary." Um, uh, or, or someone will do it before starting a business. Um, here's what I'm thinking. What do you all think? And, and just get feedback from people. Um, the only warning I'd say there is be careful who you invite to the group. Uh, you know, are they spiritual? Do they hate you? <laughs> they're going to give you bad advice. Um, anyway, any, any, any thoughts on any of this? This is, this is that's it. That's 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 guidance. Um, uh, we'll we'll let you. Extraordinary. Um, yeah. Please. Yeah. I had. Uh, I did that. Uh huh. Please. Teach Allen. I don't mind sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got a minute or two. Anyway. <laughs> I remember as a child, I was talking, we were talking about trees and stuff like that. We used to go uh, up north uh-huh. and cut down Christmas trees and play in the snow and stuff like that with my dad and my uncles. The family time was really, really inspirational to me. And as I got older, we stopped. And we, and we stopped. And I started falling away from the family, doing my own thing, doing worldly stuff because I grew up in the church, you know. I was, my aunts and uncles used to come over, my mom and all them. We would go to church every weekend and stuff. And then I got into trouble um, with the law. And I got, it was when um, I got into Teen Challenge. Mm-hmm. I was sitting at the, um, the training phase of Teen Challenge because it's like, they have the induction phase, which is six months at the induction center. And then when you go from, you complete the induction center, all the curriculum there, they transfer you over to the um, training phase, okay. which is, that was uh, further north. It was still in the desert. Don't get me wrong, it was still in the desert. But it was further north than, than the Phoenix. Than Phoenix, yeah. And it was hot, you know, and stuff like that. And they had this track that you could walk. I mean, it, it actually circled. They had uh, 40 acres, 40, 50 acres up there. And you could walk, and people had been up there. I mean, it, it had, they, they had a lot of um, inductees and stuff, and everyone kind of sort of laid their little marks, and you could see the different scriptures written out in stone <laughs> and on rocks or on a tree. I mean, there was a cactus and underground and stuff like it was really inspirational. And then they had these little benches that you can just sit and read in certain spots. Uh-huh. And I remember sitting overlooking the wash that was right here in front of me and there was a bench there tree next to me and I could see I mean quite quite a distance I could see 
the mountains, and they were, I mean, they were, they were far. And I could see snow on top of the mountains, snow capped. Okay, and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm going, okay, and this is what I did. Excuse me now, because I'm gonna get emotional because this is when God showed me something. He showed me. I said, Lord, if you are as real, if you love me and you are as real as you say you are, I want to see snow. <laughs> and I left it at that. I was praying and I left it at that. Little did I know, <laughs> the next day, they gathered all of us up, put us on the bus, and we started heading north. It was northeast. No, northwest. We were heading northwest, so we were heading like away from those mountains. And we had to go over in there, you have to go up to Sunset Point to get up towards north, I mean, so that you can go further up to, towards I-40, I I or was it Interstate 40? So as we were going up over that, and I was just sitting there, we're in a bus, there's 70 guys on this school bus, 70 men, guys on this bus, and we're riding, they're making all this noise, talking, talking about God, talking about Bible and stuff. And I'm sitting there, and I'm reading my Bible, and I glanced up as we came up over the rise. All I could smell was snow. All I could see was nothing but snow. That trip was for me. Mm -hmm. That trip was for me after we got to the church that we were doing ministry at. Uh -huh. I asked. Matt, who was a bus driver, who was, I asked him, why did we turn left instead of turning right, coming back down the hill? He pulled over, we went left, we went up even higher. He parked the bus, got, we got out of the bus, and he says, you got an hour to play in the snow. <laughs> I took two steps off the bus, fell on my face, and I cried being hit with snowballs from all the guys. <laughs> I'm sitting there just bawling my head off, going, oh my God, love me this much. How cool is that? Yeah. That's a fleece that I did. Uh -huh. And no one in this world can take that away from me. Nope. I know how real he is. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. That was something that I was said I wanted to I was going to tell you yeah, the men's ministry, but I feel that was something I can't. You can't. You. Can't, I can't even explain how I. Yeah. I was just so overwhelmed and so. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to cry. I just wanted to hold uh -huh. him and hug him and, and tell him, "Oh my God, I, I've never felt loved like that." Uh huh. I, I think. I think that's where God. I mean, that's a gift, obviously, uh, but God knew the sincerity of your heart. And I think sometimes I wonder if some of the stuff we don't get because we're not so sincere, not as sincere. We're just like, it's just, just a test. Yeah. You know, you weren't, you weren't testing them. You were just. I just, I wanted, I wanted just, to know how many you Yeah. You said, and I use you, you said you love me. You mm -hmm. said you care. Well, I want to know how real you are in my life. And he <laughs> showed me uh, to this day. I mean, oh my God. That's awesome. And with a little comedy throwing snowballs at you. I mean, how, yeah. how much? Of <laughs> I think I couldn't get that. Because the guys got to snowballs. I mean, and, I, and to top it off, I was in a three-piece suit. We weren't just regular. We went up to go do ministry work, so they made us dress all. Oh, that's we awesome. In, in, in um, Stacy's and shoes and hard. I mean, it was in dress shoes and stuff. No one there. Everyone had on ties and all this. Other. And I'm getting hit in the head with snowballs and all this. <laughs> I didn't even care. No. I didn't care. I didn't do nothing. I just fell on my knees and I cried like a baby. Oh, and even Matt, like I said, I had to ask Matt, why did you turn? And to this day, he told me. He well, he, not to this day, but when he was alive, he told me. He goes, I don't know, Rich. I don't know. It was just something that told me to turn. There you go. And I, said, and I told him about that. I said, this trip was for me.